my surgery seems to be can I can help? How's your anxiety? Doctor, you know I haven't been in a good place. I'm trying to get better and it's just hard. I think it's worth referring you to get this all checked. Yeah. And I think we need to do it urgently on, on a, what's called a cancer two-week wait referral. Ignore the behaviour you don't want to see again and reward the behaviour that you wish to encourage. He tickles. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. It's always tender. I had that breakdown. Yeah. Then I was made redundant. Yeah. Then I found out this is happened there isn't. It's all going downhill. Never, it never comes in once. No. Your appointment was at ten past ten. Ten past? Yep. I'm going to have to wait a long time to be seen. It is manic. With a bit of luck, I'll be running to time, but I won't guarantee it. Evelyn will see That's how we go. That's blood pressure goes. Yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Sandra, take a seat, darling. I'm just going to speak to the doctor. Yeah, because I'm one of Yeah, that's fine, my darling. We didn't arrive you. So it's our fault, but I will just speak to the doctor. Hello. Hi, is that Serena? Yes, hello. Hello, darling. Did you get my screen message? Yeah, I've just replied because I was with a patient. OK, she's been sat here two hours. Two hours? They, well, she came to book at 8 o'clock and then they forgot to put her in. Forgot to arrive her. So she'd been in the waiting room from 8 o'clock? Yes. So whose fault is it? Ours. OK, see her then. OK. OK, thanks, bye. bye. She's going to see you. She's going to call you now, darling, OK? I've had a, I've had a horrible morning. Where have I? I made a mistake this morning. This morning I made a mistake. Because obviously when, when it's so busy and we're booking in patients... Sandra Tamraska. Hello. It's Dr. Hyder. Come and have a seat. I'm sorry you had to wait so long. And how can I help you today? I just have some infection in my nose. OK. And I have some in my face as well. So how many weeks pregnant are you? Seven or eight. OK. So any fever at all? No. OK. <clears throat> Cough? No. No? OK. That's all right. So let's just look at the back of your throat to start with. Let's ah. just do a big ah. Yeah, OK, so it's quite red. Yeah, because I'm vomiting. Oh, you're vomiting because yes. of the pregnancy as well. Yeah. Let's have a look in your ear. OK. A little bit red, actually. Yeah. So both of the eardrums look like there's some pressure behind them as well. Oh. Now, that can sometimes be if there's an infection going on here. Oh. Can I listen to your heart and breathing? Yes. OK, you're OK, and no, it's fine. I just want to feel your face. Just pain across here at all when I'm pressing? No. no. What about across the front of the head? No. But you're feeling congested up here? Yeah, I just see it, like, here. Right, <clears throat> OK. When you blow your nose, what colour is it? Green, uh, white? Green. green. Oh, it is green. OK, your chest is all clear. OK. All right, so I think it is coming from the sinuses, the infection. Come and have a seat. Are you allergic to any antibiotics? No. no. So we could give you some amoxicillin, which is OK in pregnancy. Okay. OK. But can you give me any cream for that or something? Let's have a look inside. So it's feeling very sore, is it? And it's really... Yes, yeah. Yeah, I can give you some cream for that as well. Yeah. yeah. So that's your antibiotics and that's the cream. OK. OK. And then come back and see us if you're not feeling better. OK, thank All you. All right, I'm sorry you had to wait so long. <laughs> Take care, then. Bye-bye. Hello. Hi. Can we come? 
Come in, take a seat. Thank you. How are we doing? Yeah, actually, uh, he's coughing right? uh, all night. Yep. All night he was crying mm -hmm. with the runny nose and coughing very badly. And mm -hmm. he vomiting as well. He bring all milk out. Yeah. So that's why we're worried about it. Okay, we'll have a listen to his chest, shall we? Yeah, and, that's fine. And see what it's like. Let's have a quick take of his temperature. Oh, that's a smile, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All night he was crying <laughs> and now he's smiling. Absolutely. Well, there we go. There's a cop as well. So we're going to have a listen to that. Um, OK, if you just pop his head to the side slightly yeah. and we'll just try this uh, temperature first. OK, so no temperature, which is good news. Well, have a listen to that chest before he starts crying. <laughs> oh, you're not going to cry here, not when you look so happy. <laughs> All right, don't you need to move the... That's fine. Oh, is that right? OK, so his chest is nice and clear. He does have a little wheeze to it. Okay. Yeah, sometimes when he wheezes, I feel like yeah. when he breathes, you can hear a slight yeah. wheeze at the moment. Now, okay, so let's talk about the good signs. Okay, mm -hmm. the good signs are that his breathing is nice and slow. He's not panting. He's not you know, panting away yeah. very fast mm -hmm. and rapidly, which would be a bad sign. Mm -hmm. He's not grunting when he breathes. You know. <laughs> Like mm -hmm. that, that wouldn't be yeah. good. He does have a little wheeze, so there must be a little bit of narrowing of his airways to some mm -hmm. degree. All he's got at the moment is a probably a little viral infection that's given him a slight wheeze, OK? Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is give him... <laughs> this is, he's, he's only tiny, but that we can use an inhaler to try and help that. What I'm going to see if I can do is get one of the nurses just to show you how to use that. All right. OK? Yeah. Two seconds. Let me see if I can uh, convince one of my colleagues. Yeah. I've got to see a doctor. Um, I'd like to see Dr. Morrison. Right, well, actually, your doctor is Dr. Ward. That's Dr. Ward, is it? It's a good name for a doctor, isn't it? Yep. Absolutely. You haven't got a nurse surgery, have you? <laughs> I mean, don't worry if he gets a bit upset and, you know, if he's crying when you're trying to give him it, cos sometimes that's better, cos as they're crying, they're taking deeper breaths. Deep breath, so, yeah. so it's... The medicine um, goes in. Yes. And then pop it in. OK. Right, so we'll just see how he takes it. What's that? Good boy. Oh. That's, that's it. Good boy. So this is just to help with the cough whilst yeah. he's coughing so much. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, OK, then. Much. All right, then. Take care. Bye-bye. Terence Edwards. Hello, Chris. I'm fine. How are you? Nice to see you. Thank you. What was a good result yesterday? Yeah, it was a brilliant result. Wasn't it? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't see that coming. Made no. your day. Good. Made my day. Good. good. How are you? Not too good, cos Go they've cast me with mild heart failure now, Chris. OK. Uh, my feet are still swirling. Uh-huh. Um, I'm still out of breath a lot, and I'm still coughing in the mornings. Right, OK. And I'm finding it very hard to walk long distances now. OK. So who's looking after you? Is it the hospital or...? Nobody. Is Nobody? It is. Okay. <laughs> Who would you like to look after you? You. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that heart attack or stroke in a young age? My dad had a triple heart bypass about two years ago. With the heart failure, how are things with that? Are you managing to, to get around and, and not be breathless too much? You try not to think about it. Yeah, OK. Put this analogy as a boiler system in a house. Your heart is a pump, like mm -hmm. a boiler. They say if you don't open, the pressure will be so high that your boiler will break down. It has three heart attacks. I have, yeah. Oh, gosh. I can still be here, really. The other thing that it shapes is that, that you have an irregular heartbeat. I found that every time I was running, my heart was going insane. So, what's so I had a heart um, ablation. And you're cured. That's been fixed. That's been very, fixed. very, very pleased with that. Excellent. Brilliant. <laughs> so, what do you understand by, by the word heart failure? I don't know. No one's explained nothing okay. to me, Chris. Nothing. To... So, we all get heart failure. Yeah. If you, if even the fittest athlete runs down the road, Eventually, they will get out of breath, and that's because the heart can't pump the oxygen yeah. around the, the body enough. In, in your case, you're getting it short of breath at a very early stage of, of, uh, of exercise, and this is because your heart is enlarged and it can't pump as efficiently, so it can't get the blood around the heart, right. around the body as well as it would like to. Yeah. When you go to bed at night, you lie down, all this water that's collected in your ankles drains back 
because your feet are up yeah. to the heart, and then there's too much fluid in the blood circulation right. and, and in the and in the lungs, and so it tends to collect in the lungs and it makes you cough. Yeah, and it makes you feel short of breath at right. night. Yeah. So one of the things we need to do is to, is to reduce the amount of fluid in your body. One of the ways we treat heart failure is giving patients diuretics or water tablets, which reduces the amount of fluid in the body by increasing the amount that we pass out in urine. This therefore gives uh, less total fluid in the body, reducing the strain on the heart to get the blood pumped around the tissues and back to the heart. The other thing is to try and make your heart beat more efficiently. Yeah. Now you're on some tablets for that, but there's another tablet we ought to give called a beta blocker, right. which we know helps your heart to beat more efficiently. OK. But you have to be careful yeah. with these. If you give them a too high a dose, it makes the heart slow down so much it doesn't beat enough to get the blood yeah. around, and so it makes the heart failure worse. Right. So we start off at a very low dose and work our way up. OK, Chris, yeah. OK? Yeah. You increase the doses until we get you feeling better. OK, Chris, yeah. That's Is that fine. OK? That's fine, yeah. Right. I had that breakdown. Yeah. So I was under the Dr Sultan for that now still. Yeah. Then I was made redundant. Yeah. Then I find out this is that benevolence. It's all going downhill. Never, it never happens in ones. No. Can I see you first thing next Monday morning? OK, Chris. Could you also, you. please, for the end of this week, have a blood test done? Yeah. Just Thank you, Chris. Okay, yes. Take care. Yeah, All the best. See you next yeah. week. Yeah. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye, Chris. So, it's something for his skin, is it? Uh, yes, please. Uh... Uh, that's the one. So, memetazone? Yeah. That's, that's a really strong, strong steroid cream. Yes, sir. This is not something that we would ever put on repeat for okay. a child. Mm -hmm. Importantly, what we need to assess is how is his eczema? His skin is fine, if you can have a look over here. Everything is... So, you can see there's some redness yeah. just here, yeah. can't you? It's kind of classical eczema, dry skin. Yeah. How about his arms? Arms? It's uh, here. Oh, wow. OK. How about legs? Oh, I like your trainers. <laughs> OK. So that looks quite sore, doesn't it? You can see he's been yeah, scratching yeah. at it. OK. What's his bath time routine like? His uh, bath time routine is like two or three, two or three times a, a day, uh, a week. OK, so you, it, not having not, bath not every not day. Not. We know that things like soaps, shower gels, bubble baths, mm -hmm. they all make the skin dry. He doesn't use, he any, doesn't use any of those. That's perfect. Daddy, what we could give you is a tub of cream, mm -hmm. um, and when you, he is having a bath or a shower, you can rub that in all over the body okay. and then just wash it off. Twice a day is good. Mm -hmm. It would be even better if it was three times or four times okay. a day. Here's the crucial bit. Mm -hmm. Eczema is a dry skin condition. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you chuck moisture, moisture, moisture mm -hmm. at dry skin, mm -hmm. It's going to be perfect. Okay, it will work. Mm -hmm. That means then you don't need the steroids. Because yeah, okay. we are really reluctant as doctors mm -hmm. and clinicians to mm -hmm. give steroids, especially in a child mm -hmm. as young as Nirmit, okay. who uh, his skin is not going to be like your skin. Yeah, yeah, okay? It's going to be thinner. Mm -hmm. And steroid side effects are that they make the skin even right. thinner. Yeah. So these should be reserved mm -hmm. only to use when there are flare ups yeah. of eczema. Okay. I'm really concerned about how strong that is. Okay, no worries. Um, and at the moment, actually, his skin's not that bad. Okay. It doesn't need the, the really no, strong steroid. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep those three things on repeat. So Cetraben will be on repeat, soap substitute tub on repeat, and an antihistamine to drink once a day. That's uh, and those, that's his regular treatment. Okay. That's the time to come and see us, and we assess the need okay. for steroids. That's fine. All right? And it looks like we can send this prescription electronically straight, just straight, to the pharmacy. Straight, straight. I'll do that right away. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Nice, nice to meet you too. Come on, Take man. care. Say bye. Bye bye, young man. Bye bye. Have a nice evening. Be good. Enjoy. Bye. Take bye. care. You too. Why do people have paracetamol on prescription? Don't know. It's sixteen p in shops. But it costs us like ten pounds. Well, not us, but you know what I mean. Oh my God. I've had a bad morning. Oh God. I can't <coughs> breathe properly. <coughs> I was going to say, is it your chest or your stomach? My I couldn't chest. tell. I couldn't tell. I, I mean, I, can't, I don't know. What, I've been having... I've been having, like, in the night time, like, food is stuck in my... here. Yeah. But I've been coughing. And I've been taking my inhaler. Yeah. And I know I'm really chesty at the moment. OK. Yeah. Anything coming up? Yeah. What colour? Brown. How's your anxiety? Um, don't have my butt, my moments, but don't feel too bad at the moment, but I'm... Anxious about certain things, so I've got a lot of changes going. Yeah. I'm going to go back to work okay. part time. I'm going to go back because my sickness finishes on the 15th, but I need to get back. But Do you think some of how you're feeling might be related to that this morning? 
I don't know. I don't. I was trying to remember when I had these sort of feelings before, and I think when I had really used to have really bad asthma when I was little. Hmm. Okay, let's have a look. It feels like it's my lungs, and I was thinking I've got lung cancer. I'm dying. Doctor, you know I haven't been in a good place. I'm trying to get better, and it's just hard. My daughter's at grammar school, and she's studying uh, PE, and it tells you about health. It says that the definition of health is to be able to take normal stress in a normal way. Okay. Okay. And I don't, so I'm not healthy. <laughs> Can I get you to stand up for me? I'm not healthy, doctor. I want to, I want to have a listen at the back, OK? Mm. Right, it was with Dr O'Donnell. Your appointment was at four o'clock, you're late. I did try to bring him, but... And I asked, why are you late? Well, I've had to yeah, walk all the way here and being in pain. Uh, you're Katrina Lily White. She's about 10 minutes late, well, nearly 12. 12 late like, because she had to walk to the surgery. Are you still able to see her? Or... OK, no worries, thank you. Right, he will be able to see you, but you will have to wait until the other people have been seen who have been on time. How long is that going to be? I don't know. And he will see you as and when, OK? Yeah, that's fine. Oh. What kind of a driver are you? <laughs> oh, good. Push chair. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Can you, you can you manage? Yeah, yeah that's good. It. We're in. Okay, good. Hello, boys and girls. So, <laughs> what can I do for you? Sorry for keeping um, you waiting. No, that's fine. Basically, what it is, I suffer with abscesses and boils. Okay, and where do you get them? Under my belly okay. and on my legs. Okay. And how long has that been going on for? Enough two years now. Really? OK. Mm -hmm. They referred me to um, plastic. Yeah. Had the hospital appointment yesterday. Yeah. But I'm in literally pain. Yeah. And what did the plastic say? Uh, they're referring me to a specialist that okay. deals with Deals with this, yeah. OK. <laughs> OK. And right, just pop yourself over here. So just show me where this is travelling. I see, yeah, indeed, yeah. So these are predominantly associated with, um, with, with weight and with excess tissue rubbing on um, other tissue. So you're, because this comes down and it rubs against your lower abdomen, your thighs, it causes friction. And the friction weakens the skin and bugs that normally live on the skin but normally wouldn't cause a problem. Down the bottom. Oh, I can imagine. I can see that you know, there, it is inflamed. Um, do you have any under your arms? No. no, it's it's all down here. Yeah, it's all yeah, down here. yeah. Right. Stand up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, someone come down, please. Right, come sit down here with mummy. Good. Yeah, sit there then. Good girl. Can I get you to come and lie down on there? Because oh, oh. so you were talking serious. about that food sticking, weren't you? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Look in your feel it. It's a bit painful there. Uh, okay, that's fine. We get you to sit back up. All right. Yeah. Does this here? Ah. Uh, Is it eye again? Ah. Uh, yeah, it's a bit on the red side. Do you know what? What? Saturations are fine. Your chest is really nice and clear. No. Mm. What's happening? So I think it's just a cold, really. But I, th I wonder whether the stress is making everything worse as well, which is why you were getting some of that food sticking symptom as well. Yeah. But let's put it, let, let me put it to you like this. I'm not worried that your chest is too bad at the moment. And, of course, I want you to stop smoking. I am. Because that's going to make all of that stuff yeah. worse. Yeah. If, if, I, if I had lung cancer... OK. What would, would, would I get, be getting food trapped in here? What's making you worry about cancer? Because my dad, my dad, my dad smoked a lot. My dad was a heavy smoker. Okay. He had throat cancer. Okay. So I got scared last night. At the moment, there's nothing in there that makes me worry about cancer right now. Okay. But of course, you're right. If, with the smoking, you've got yeah, to, know, the risk yeah. is higher, isn't it? Which is one of the reasons why I want you to stop. Yeah. I mean, I know you've done well, haven't you? And I've given up the Red Bull. Yeah, I'm good. Working, I'm working. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm working on. I'm working on trying to give up this. I haven't got my patch on today. Did you come to the clinic here? I just, yeah, I started okay. and I stopped because I had so much things going on, but I'm now going to be... So you're going to re you restart yeah. it? OK, yeah. fine. Yeah. So, um, in the short term, it is literally just things like paracetamol and stuff, but I'm going to give you something for the stomach as well. OK. Is that okay? If you think things get worse, then I want you to come back to us, OK? OK. Thank you. No problem. Take care. Take care, all right. I'll see you again. You too. See ya. See ya. Bye.
I think you, you need a combination of antibiotics yeah. at this stage, really. It would be really good, if, from your skin point of view, if you were to avoid all forms of sugar. So no, no sugar in tea or coffee, no sweets, cakes, chocolate, paste. But just don't, don't eat anything with sugar. Yeah, good. Do you take any sugary drinks at all? Oh, the only drink I do drink is Harbina. Yeah, it has sugar. And you know, I can't th drink plain water. One thing that sugar does is it weakens the immune system and your immune system isn't able to respond as well. Oh, Try and steer okay. clear of sugar because ah. sugar and friction are what, and genetics are what contribute to this kind of situation. Okay. Oh, what? No, 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 no. Enough now. Come and sit down. Put your trousers up, please. I'm here. I'm here, Albie. I'm here. Yeah. What are you doing? Stop. Leave him. Right, that is enough. No, it's just sometimes children are like that. Whatever it is, because they want to run about and do things, that's what it is. Yeah. The best thing to do with children, as you probably know, being a mum yourself, is ignore the behaviour you don't want to see again and reward the behaviour that you wish to encourage. So just, just ignore... When they're doing things that you just continue to talk as if they weren't doing it, they'll eventually stop. I know it's hard, yeah, I know it's hard. And the thing is, any response from you is a reward. So even if you give out to them, it's a reward, because they're getting your attention. All right, come on, let's go, let's go home. Bye-bye. Yeah, time to go. Yeah, yeah. Actually, they do very well on ignoring them. Yeah. Thank you. How can I help? Um, I came to see Dr. Moyes yeah. a week ago on Saturday. She sent me out to the hospital for some um, blood tests, okay. x ray um, to do. Because I, I have this um, disease. Mm -hmm. So I was. Um, Eight and a half months off work last year. Right. Eight weeks in hospital, two weeks in intensive care. Gosh, okay. um, something's not right. Consolation Lion Care speaking. How can I help? Fatigue again. Um, I think I'm putting weight on around my midriff again, okay. which is what I did prior to um, presenting with this in the first right, instance. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't appear to get anywhere near as much oxygen into my lungs as I did. So basically, I've come back today to try and get some results because I'm, yeah. I'm feeling I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm starting to rapidly okay. go downhill. David was diagnosed with a very rare condition called thrombotic microangiopathy and ended up on intensive care. This condition affects the small blood vessels in our organs, uh, most often the kidney, and causes them in some cases to shut down, which is what happened with Mr. Taylor. Uh, he required dialysis of his blood. Your full blood count was normal, so there's no wrong with it, nothing wrong with the actual blood cells. Um, your kidney tests um, were much in line with the ones you've had before and actually probably your function of your kidneys better than it was. Obviously, I know that I've got kidney damage from mm. the disease, mm -hmm. but in my mind, I'm mm. thinking, have I got other damage? Yeah. You know, so yeah. is, it, is it likely that I have to know, or is it possible that I have mm. lung damage? And mm. clearly from what I'm yeah. reading, it's a possibility. So. But, yeah, and you're having some lung symptoms. So I think um, what I'll do is I'll write a letter to the chest clinic and get them to give us a second opinion. And, you know, we can take things forward that way. Okay, that's great. All right. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. 
Come in all. Thank you. That's it. Have a seat just there. You up there? Yes, please, yeah. Thank you very much. Right, so, blood tests. Have you got a good vein for me? I do hope so. <laughs> you're, you're a useless. I just looked the other way. Oh, yeah, we're used to that. That's good fine. Good girl, thank you. Oh, young, <laughs> good young lady. I'll be really formal. Thank you, nurse. Oh, thank you. Don't <laughs> worry about it. It's very common. Right, here we go. Sharp scratch. Well done. You OK? Yes, thank you. Yeah, good. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, on the television, I can watch stabbings, killings, mm -hmm. kicking, shootings. If I have a dermot comes out, I look away. Really? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Right. right. So give that a really firm push. You may have a colourful bruise on that one. Oh, it's normal, yes. Yeah, so oh, do you that. bruise? Do you bruise easy? Yeah. OK. Yeah. As soon as I went in, it just ballooned up. Thank you very, very much. Oh, gosh, that's going to be a lovely bruise. <laughs> With pretty <laughs> colours. <laughs> It's been a pleasure to talk to you, thank you. <laughs> All right, give that a week. Any concerns, we will write to you. I've enjoyed meeting you. Thank you very and much. And you. Bye Take bye. care. Bye-bye now. So, the mole. I have a mole, Yeah. Yes. So we've got this mole on your back, I think. Any bleeding or... I haven't noticed any, no. Um, I know that moles can be a little bit dodgy sometimes, yes. so... Any family history of any skin cancers or anything like that? No, no. no. I've yeah. had one before. Yeah, taken off? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Yeah. I just, I just got a thing about moles. If you have any moles um, that are either suddenly becoming quite asymmetrical, so they were around and yeah, now are yeah. irregular, um, if you find that they're getting bigger, if you're getting bleeding or itching from them, um, or they're changing colour, yeah. you know, all of those things are quite sort of um, important to keep an eye on. And if they happen, then come and see us. Yeah. And yeah, keep using the sunscreen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, who's our HTA for today? Yeah, All right, come and have a seat down there on the blue chair. So just remind me, it was the four on the back, wasn't it? And they were starting to crust and catch on things. Right? Five, I think, yeah. yeah. OK, so the idea is the things that you've got, they grow on the surface of the skin like that. Mm. So what we do is we put a needle under here, inject some local anaesthetic under there so that you can't feel any of that. We just slice them off the base and then stick a plaster on the top. That's it. Yeah? They won't come back. Can they? they can come back. Um, they can come back in other places, because that's just to do with mm. skin type. We try our best to make sure that doesn't happen. All right, can we get yourself ready? I'm just going to get the local anaesthetic ready. OK. That should be fine. So you're just going to feel a bit of a sharp scratch under each one when I do it, OK? Mm -hmm. Is this one coming now? OK, so that's the four. Why, why do they come on the back, then? Um... They can come anywhere, really. Some people are just prone to them. I mean, the good, the good thing about them is that they, you know, they're almost always benign. Um, the bad news is that you tend to get more as you get older. Particularly sophisticated, really. It's just sort of scraping it off. Mm. Not feeling anything sharp, right? Mm -hmm. Usually, the sound is worse than it actually is. Mm. All right. All right. That's it, all done. So keep it dry for a couple of days. And then Karen is normal. All right, all right. Nice. take care, see you later.
Do you have that whole northern southern divide in your house for the accents? We call them pants. Yes, I have that in my house. Uh, and you call them trousers. I asked her, Margaret, and Margaret was like, I've got trousers on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and do you call pants like underwear? No, it's just weird. Oh, God. Hello. Hello, Doctor. Come on in, Leslie. Thank you. So I've been reading letters about you, yeah? Oh, you got a few. I've got there. some, yeah. So you went to the blackouts clinic. And yes. was there a cardiology letter I got this morning? You should have a cardiology, uh, uh, respiratory and a blackout. Wow. Leslie has been diagnosed with bird fancier's lung, which is an allergic condition. Um, it can be triggered by bird feathers, by animal fur, by quite a lot of things. In his case, we think it was probably um, bird-related. At one point, Leslie was keeping up to 500 birds. <laughs> What is it that you're scared of? I can't breathe. I can't breathe. In the past, Leslie's been very anxious about his health, and that's sometimes made it more difficult to treat. Shall we start with the respiratory? Right. Uh, they were quite happy with you, weren't they? Yes, I think so. CT scan looks OK? Yes, they've got... Nothing they've got, nasty going on? No, as far as they're concerned, it looked, it looked good. I'm getting better sleep. Yeah. I got a better mindset. More... I got a better mindset at the moment because after waiting 18 months with nothing being done, mm. it's at least something being done at the moment. And you know that, that things like your lungs, you may reach a stage where they say this is probably as good as we yeah, can get. As I said to you before, I didn't expect it to be any better. I just want to know that it's, well, yeah. it's got worse or it's still the same. And when will I be seeing you again? Well, should we wait until you've had some of these tests done now? Well, right. Yeah? So when you've had the angiogram, when is that? A week today. A week today, yeah. OK. So if I see you a couple of weeks after that, okay, yeah, be gives time for them to get a letter I'll, to I'll, me. I'll put an uh, appointment at the end of the you month. You can squeeze me in with all your okay. other appointments, yeah? <laughs> it's very satisfying to see Leslie in better health. He's breathing better, his mood has improved. He's just generally more cheerful. Thank you very much, Doctor, for no your... I say good to come in and find I'm not as bad as I used to be. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Musa Siddiqui? Come in. Yeah. Oh. Come and take a seat. Your mum, yeah? Yeah. Lovely. I'll just bring up Musa's files. And Musa is 13 years old. Yeah. 13 and a half. Lovely. How can I help? OK, so he's been having um, problems with his right ear for a few weeks now, and he constantly feels he needs to pop his ear. Um, and any recent travel on a plane? Nothing. No, so hasn't. it just started with, what, a bubbly sound? When you, like, don't unpop it, um, it hurts even more when you pop it. Yeah. But, like, if you just keep constantly popping it, it doesn't hurt. And have you had any trauma to that ear? Have you had a hit to the head or anything at all? No. OK, and have you had any water that's gone into that ear recently or done any swimming recently? He hasn't done swimming, but he does have showers a lot. That's what I was thinking, maybe, but whether that's mm. normal or what. OK. So sometimes you can get this thing called eustachian tube dysfunction. That's the tube, the eustachian tube, that connects your throat, your ear, nose and throat, basically, and it can get blocked with phlegm. So the outside of the ear, and then there's an eardrum, and then, which is that thin flap, and then you get the middle ear, and you have to constantly make the pressures the same by doing that popping sensation that you're doing. Let's just do your temperatures and things. Any, uh, no swelling or any pain behind the ear or anything like that. OK, let's have a look in the normal ear. So you've got some wax in this ear. There's a couple of little hairs, actually, right at their back. But the eardrum's intact and it's shiny. I think it's a little bit white, so a bit of fluid behind the eardrum. Um, but actually, the eardrum's intact. It hasn't popped or burst or anything like that. There's nothing nasty in there. Because he's 13, I think we should try the spray and the eardrops to help alleviate this popping sensation. If you do have any mucus in the nose, blow it out, try to get it out, because it can get stuck. There you go. Thanks. Lovely. There you Thank go. You. Cheers, Thanks bye. Thanks so 
Yeah, I'll go to lunch at one. I've got, co I've got cottage pie. You've got cottage pie, love? Yeah, cottage pie. Cottage pie? Cottage pie. Ooh, I want cottage pie. What's cottage pie? It's got mashed potato and, um, like, minced meat underneath it. Is it because it's made in a cottage or something? Yeah. And the shepherds make the, shep the shepherd's pie. The rich one's lamb and rich one's beef. Beef. Shepherd's pie's lamb. Oh, well, shepherd's pie's lamb pie's is the beef. <laughs> Hello, it's Dr. Hyder. Come and have a seat. And how are you? Not too good. <laughs> What's been happening? I've been getting pains. OK. And um, it, it's been going on for a long time. That I get loose bone motion. OK, all right. Um, but the pain is really bad, and sometimes I don't feel like eating, but I've got to eat because I'm on tablets. Yeah, so what's happening with your bowels? Are you loose or are you constipated? No, loose. Loose. OK. Any blood in the poo? I never know. I never look. I just go and... That's it. Right. But, um... So the... how long has it been loose for, do you think? Mm, for a while. And I've also lost weight. Yeah. Um, how long have you noticed the weight loss for? Mm, about a month. About a month. OK, yeah. all right. And then the change with your bowels, how long has that been? Mm, about six months, I suppose. OK, so that's quite a long time, it's six long months, time, isn't but... it? Yeah. And then the pain, for how long? Mm, about a month. About a month yeah, as well. It's not, okay. yeah. And appetite, can you eat? I'm not really fancy anything. And the weight loss, how much weight have you lost, do you think? I was a size, size 22, 22 and I've gone down to 20. Right. And even these jeans are 20 and they're loose. OK. Has anyone else mentioned that they noticed that you've lost yeah. weight? Yeah, right? friends at work. Hi, guys. Uh, have you got any appointments? No, I need okay. stronger tablets. Uh, I've been given up, of course, I'm in agony here. Right, I can put you on telephone triage. But I, I've got to go work after, so I just need to repeat the repeat. Yeah, I know, but I, I can't, I've got nothing I can book you Well, can you not ask the doctor just to give me more tablets? I ain't sleeping more than an hour a night and I'm a little concerned now. I'm going to go and speak to the doctor now. I'll go thank and ask you. somebody, OK? Thank you very much. What I'm going to do then, swap the naproxen for a slightly different anti-inflammatory, because okay. it's not doing you as it should do, and I'm going to increase the dazepam just so you can add some relief. Take a seat there. Let me have a quick look. Does it look swollen? Is this one here? It doesn't look as much as it sometimes does and doesn't, this one here. Yeah. yeah I'm just having a look. See, the triggering occurs yeah, not in here, no. but it occurs down in here. Exactly. And it's just about there, where it's happening. So a little nodule almost that can you goes feel through it, can you? The... Yeah, you can feel that. So the injection goes in down here. OK. It's not these probably cause those injections, is it? Is, that is it something the doctors like to give out or not really, or just...? Uh, it's a treatment like anything else. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And it's appropriate for some people and not for others. Like anything, there is a failure rate. But I think, you know, hopefully this will reduce the inflammation and we'll see how we do it. And, you know, and if we tried a few of them and it's not effective or it's getting worse, yeah, the then there's an operation that, that can be done. But, you know, you don't want to go down that yeah. line if we can stop it with something else. OK, mate? OK, that's it, yeah. OK, a little prick now. Sorry. <laughs> it's always tender. Well done. Let's pop that there. Yeah, lovely. Lovely. Thanks for the pain. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> Happy days, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I put the money in there? Or? Yes, please, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support. Is there any stress at work at all? No, I, was, I have been under stress. Oh, have you? Because my sister, I lost my sister. Oh, no, I'm sorry to hear that. Mm. But I'm feeling very tired at the moment. Is yeah. it OK if I examine you? Yeah, that's fine. I need to examine your tummy just to feel that. And we need to examine the back passage as well, if that's OK. It involves inserting a glove finger into the back yeah. passage. And I'll tell you what I'm doing, so it won't be anything you're not expecting. Yeah. OK. Christine has a family history of bowel cancer and also presented with several months of loose motions and had some abdominal pain and weight loss, which was worrying. And where is the pain at the moment? It goes in my belly button. OK, so it starts up at the top and then yeah. goes down. I'm just gently going to press on your tummy. See, that's tender there. That is, sorry. Oh, that is tender, isn't it? For the 
back passage examination, if you just lower down the bottom bits, oh. I'll give you a moment to do it. <laughs> Can I come through again? Yeah. I've got some cold gel on a gloved finger. I'm just going to have a look at the area to start with. It looks a bit sore. Sorry, can you take a deep breath? Sorry about this. Oh, sorry. I'll let you get dressed and then come and have a seat when you're ready. Okay. There's no blood and everything inside feels normal. OK, thanks. <laughs> come and have a seat when you're ready. OK, so from examining you, you are a little bit tender still in the tummy, aren't you? Yeah. Um, the back passage examination was normal, apart from it's a bit sore on the outside. The yeah. skin looks a bit red, and that might be because you've been having the diarrhoea for so long. Yeah. But because you've had the weight loss and you've had a long history now, six months of the diarrhoea, I think it's worth referring you to get this all checked. Yeah. And I think we need to do it urgently on, on a, what's called a cancer two-week weight referral. Okay. okay. So I don't want you to be alarmed by, no. by that, but the letter will come in the post. It'll be within the next two weeks, and the appointment will be within the next two weeks as well. Yeah, that's fine. If there's anything abnormal on the results, I would normally contact you. If they're all OK, I wouldn't. But if you've had your appointment with the specialist and you still know better and they say everything's OK, still come back in and yeah. see us. More than one in three people will develop cancer at some point in their lifetime. Thank you. If it's not you directly, it will be a member of family, friends, one of your colleagues. We're all affected by it. So where's she having her hair shaved off? Here. Right here. Right here. Get the over out. <laughs> it's a big shock when one of your colleagues develops cancer and one of our colleagues at reception, Glenda, developed ovarian cancer. When is the Great British Shave Off happening? <laughs> One o'clock, out here? Yes. Yeah. I went shopping yesterday, I thought, oh, I don't need shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> Alison, who is our reception manager, has arranged a charity head shaving event in support of Glenda. For a woman to actually shave their head is a big, big thing, I think so anyway. It wasn't till the day of Alison's head shave that it hit home to me that I actually had gone through cancer. I hope I'm back soon <coughs> to get you all in shape. Reception, like yeah. And let's shave. <laughs> well done. Wow. Wow. It tickles. <laughs> <laughs> My head feels like my old man's now. I know, yeah, it's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Proud of you. You're welcome, my darling. The support I've received from the surgery has been very important to me. They've been in touch constantly, looking forward to having me back as a team member, and that's really been important. Managing how you choose to prescribe for any patient uh, can sometimes be a challenge. If you have any sniff of getting a prescription um, from two doctors at the same time... I'll promise you that's not going to yeah, happen. Yeah, this yeah. is just a misunderstanding. Promises don't cut it. Patients who have a positive outlook on life are a pleasure to work with. We have a laugh because just as they patch me up and want me, I get something else. 
always fancy a little bottle bit. Behave yourself. <laughs> I think it's quite difficult sometimes to realise that there is only a certain amount you can do. And I'm just so frustrated to see some, to see somebody deteriorate so much in six months. It's just it's soul destroying. Does it hurt you when you go to a wee, Charlie? No. He goes for a wee a hell of a lot. Why do you go to a wee so much? How are you again? Okay? Final of surgery has been to Pam. How can I help? Hello, it's Dr. Hyder. Come through and have a seat. You right? Fine, thank you. And how can I help you today? Oh, I had a really serious accident on a Thursday. I've got oh, my legs gosh. crushed. OK. Um, so... At went... work or...? At work, yeah. Right, okay. I was, um... Hard to explain to everyone. I was sitting... Oh, I was not sitting down, but I was working with my legs in between two rollers and cargo systems. Uh, somebody activated a lane and a, a pallet. My legs were sitting down like that, crushed my legs against the rollers. Uh, I can't explain it to you. Let me just get out of there. So if I was, I was, by the time the roller had bed come, I was like that, against the rollers. Oh. The pallets coming from behind and crushed my legs. Right. And literally... It's me. So, yeah. Yeah. That would have been taken... It's four tonne. So they would have taken them clean off. Goodness me. So it's, um... It's, a lot of it's psychological at the minute as well. Because it's, um, I forget flashbacks on that. Mm. Scary. Obviously, it can't work at the minute. You've got a lot of bruising there. Yes, as well. it's coming out today. It's and, it, and this cut this as cut, well. You know, no, this leg is actually not too bad. But that happened at the accident. That ha yeah, yeah, that's right. this pressure. I mean, I had an x ray on Thursday. Oh, did you? Yes. Yeah. And there's no bro broken bones. But okay. she said there's a hell of a lot of swelling. Mm. Is it painful on the shin? The pain, that's not too bad to be fair, but it's, no. it's when I walk around, it's more internal. So right. I started to pinpoint where it is. It's only when I put pressure on it and weight in it. I, I can sort of walk around all right, I just take that for support. Yeah. But I, I can't get upstairs properly. Uh, my job obviously involves me climbing up ladders, steps, because mm. I'm a, like a, a maintenance electrician. So. Yeah, I mean, can you bend your knee okay? Yeah. So the knee bit's fine. The knee bit's fine. It's, I mean, here hurts. That, uh, that really hurts there. Mm. And you, the X-ray, there was definitely no fracture. No fracture, no. So you got to think. Then. My legs must have squeezed to the side of my arms. It's unpleasant, isn't it? It is, yeah. So you need a sick note. Do you need pain relief? I probably would, yeah. And something anti-inflammatories or something that help. Yeah, I think it's pretty extensive bruising, isn't it? So the bruising's coming out. So I think a couple of weeks would hopefully mean that the bruising will start to settle. Yeah. But soft tissue injuries, they can take up to six weeks to resolve. Really? All together, mm. um, I've given you the cocodamol. You can yep. take a maximum of two tablets up to four times a day, and then that's your sick note as well. So I've just written crush injury to both legs at work. Thank you. And we've done it from twenty second to the eighth. Thank you. So if you're no better by the eighth, then come back Thanks and we'll see you again. And if it's worse, we can always see you. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Thank you very that's much. That's okay. Take care then. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. I don't want to waste four hours of Wexham Park, but at the moment I'm having severe facial problem and hit, hitting my right arm, and I don't want to go to Wexham because I'm one of those patients that has fibromyalgia type things. Okay. So, is there somebody I can get checked before I go? Just a minute. <laughs> this is not affecting my voice at the moment, it's affecting my lips, my tongue. Normally, it just goes down here. It started with a headache, okay. which I've still got, yeah. and it's going down the left side of my body. Slowly but surely. But you've had this before? When no, you're not like this. My so it's it's yeah, it's going, going to slowly, affecting the nerves like down the side of my body. I don't know, that's what I'm worried about. Yeah. 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 A month ago, I said I was having a stroke, and I was. It won't okay. surprise me. OK, thanks. If you take a seat for me, and I will just quickly speak to the doctor. OK, thank you. So it's not, yeah, not going to Come in. Hi. Tell me. She's um, 
I don't know if she's having a heart attack, lady, but her whole left hand side is going numb. Mm. Um, she's got now a tingling in the tongue. Let's get the ECG for her. Um, okay. Who's doing the merge uh, treatment room? Hello. Alison, uh, good afternoon. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I've got it. I'm fine, but no, my, one of my patients could be having a heart attack. I want an ECG done. OK, then. Um, she is Karen Price. OK. And uh, shall I send her towards you? No. Yes, yeah, sit down towards 10. Yeah, I'll take it there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you. Bye. When she's done with that. Sorry? When she's done. She can come straight. Come here, yeah? Yeah. OK, thank you. I haven't had anything like this before. Yeah. Your speech seemed to be okay. I don't know. My tongue's all... No. I, I had tingle. I mean, I know it's sort of the best thing to tell you, but I had a, I had a minor stroke a long time yeah. ago. Uh, I suspect this like is. 10, 15 years ago. But I didn't know what it was, but my, my face started dripping from one side. And I was really stressed. But, I don't know. but you follow me? You OK to get up? Yeah? Sure. Don't worry, you can go slowly. So just follow my finger, OK? Stick your tongue and waggle it from side to side. That's fine. Open your mouth, show me your teeth. Sometimes I, f I can smell burning when there's no burning. Okay. Are you checking that I've had a stroke or something? Come in. Hello, come on, have a seat. Hello. There we go. Thank you. How's it going? Hiya. Right. I've been having headaches mm. on and off for a little while. Mm -hmm. And today I had one at five to two mm. and as I was driving home I got a pain mm. down here and it's now getting gradually worse and mm. my arm and leg don't feel right. Is it very feeling very weak? It's, it's not so much weak as though it's not quite there. Quite there. Mm. When you had previous heart attacks, what were the symptoms like? Well, there was mostly chest pain, yeah, I had wasn't some it? Yeah, chest pain. But this is nothing like. Mm. ECG is absolutely yeah, normal, that's what the nurse which is said. good news in a way. Have you lost up any power in your hands and legs, or it, it just feels, feels like that? It just feels they're lighter mm. on this side. Okay. Can I have a quick feel of what's going on? Examine you. Yeah. Try squeezing my fingers tight. Mm hmm. Tight, 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 tight. Okay. In any urgent or emergency situation like this, it's important for a healthcare professional to be uh, level-headed and calm, mainly because uh, patients are in a state of anxiety. Okay, push me away. Pull me towards you. Like this, hold it like this. Push me towards you. That's good. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly have a look at your eyes. Quite often, it's very easy to succumb to the pressures of the emergency and get the anxiety and the fear uh, transferred onto you. And then the patients won't be reassured and they will lose the confidence in the healthcare professional. Hence, I was calm and level-headed. Close your eyes tight, 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 tight. Good. Clench your teeth for me. That's good. Oh, thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> Mm. So mainly at the moment it's like headaches on the left side, a tingling sensation and feeling weak. Yeah, I'm tired. Mm. It's like somebody's hit me with a baseball mm. bat on the side of my face. Thank you. Based on your uh, symptoms and uh, the scoring system, it would put you on some uh, risk here. We need to exclude if there is any phenomenon like mini stroke. It might be worthwhile speaking to the High Wycombe Stroke Centre, what they think we need to do. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. Thank you for your call. We are experiencing a high volume 
legitimate calls and all available operators are busy. Please hold and your call will be answered shortly. Doesn't seem like we are having any luck today. So if you are having a stroke then... Well, if there are fast symptoms like complete weakness on one side, tingling, facial droopiness and everything, we advise patients to call 999. High Wickham is the stroke centre. That's where we get on-the-day investigations like MRI scan and everything. That probably is the way forward. As soon as you, they see this letter and everything, they'll be happy to see in High Wickham anyway. Okay. Is that OK? Yeah. yeah. Shall I give that to you? I'll take that. Anyone? All the best. Hopefully, yeah. it's, all, it's all going to be OK, all right? OK. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. I've got bloody animal fleas on me. They're all one little tiny animal fleas. Two of them just jumped on me. You know where they're from? Well, they're from somebody. Oh, you've got birds and squirrels yeah. and chipmunk. Yeah. You're not enjoying any of it, no? At the moment, I'm not. I can't. I just can't even get out. Charlie Williams, please. Hello there. Hiya. Come in. Sorry Sit to keep down, you. Sit down, That's all right. Sit down. Hello, Charlie. Hello. He's had some pain. Yeah, lower abdomen, uh -huh, okay. right in the middle. Now, he's had this a couple of times over the last month or so, uh -huh. but it's not been to the extent that it was this morning. Uh -huh. It's coming again. He said the pain is always there, but it comes, it like spikes. Uh huh, yeah. And then it, he's doubled over and it's like yeah. cramping and stabbing. Yeah. yeah, okay. And when you do, do a wee, does it hurt you when you go to a wee, Charlie? When you do a wee wee? No. Doesn't stink. No. Good. He is, he goes for a wee a hell of a lot. Uh huh. Like, he'll go in the space of an hour about five times. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm like, well, why do you go to the wee so much? Sometimes boys, their bladders are slightly sort of weaker than women's, and you find oh, that okay. they tend to sort of go and they sort of go out of that. Now, if he's not getting any pain, it's unlikely to be an infection, but I think it's worth trying to get a urine sample at some point and bringing it okay. so that we can yeah. test that. You haven't had any diarrhoea when you've been to number two? I have had one. Well, that was a couple of weeks back. Oh, a couple of weeks ago. A couple ago. of weeks ago. Yeah. One week ago. One week ago? No, okay. I think it was a couple I, of... I had to have toast. It hasn't been constipated. It's not been like when you've gone that lots of little hard things and difficult to get out. No. No. no Can I have a look at your you and your tummy up on the chair um, table? Should we jump up? Let me get this for you. Good man. That's a good Lie down. Good. That's good. Just open wide for me. It was really warm this morning, actually. I've given him some yeah, Nurofen. Yeah, relax. Yeah. I'll just check his temperature and open that up. And then that way. 36.4, so that's okay. okay. Let's have a little feel of this, Tommy. We've got sore down here. Sorry. Have you had lots of wind? You're a bit windy, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come and sit up again now. He's obviously getting some crampy pain, and the bowels are quite active. Okay. So it sounds a little bit more like he may be getting a little bit of a, a bile infection and he may end up in a bit sick or get some diarrhoea again oh, with okay. it. Sometimes very th early things like appendicitis can yeah. present just with general tummy pain. And yeah. At the minute, there's no indication that that's what that's it is. Good. I would continue doing what you're doing, give him some Eurofim, okay. um, a little bit of whatever he fancies to eat and a little bit of fluid every so often. Don't tell him that, I'll be asking me for ice cream for lunch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah whatever, <laughs> would, in a sense, whatever he'll take. If he's getting worse or going downhill, bring him back this afternoon so yeah. we can just do a double check and make sure it's not anything like appendicitis or anything. Okay. But if you can get a urine sample, it's worth just, if you do, you know, dropping it in so we can just check. Got a in. pot or anything? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, lovely. OK, okay young yeah. man. So thank you to the doctor. Thank you very much. Pleasure to meet you. OK. OK. Brilliant. Thank you okay. so much. OK, not at all. Cheers. Well done, well done. Come on then, what ones? Well, look. <laughs> Sorry, doctor. It's OK, Leslie. Come on in. Sorry, I'm running late. So, last time I spoke to you, I got you in to see Dr Javid because you said your chest yeah. was worse, yeah? What did they say you've got? What's your diagnosis? Avian lung disease. Hypersensitive to birds. Well, they told me to get rid of my birds because I had about 
nearly 500, 600 different types of birds, which I can understand was giving me this problem. They think that you've reacted to the birds and they think that there's damage in... Well, yeah. the blood tests show that he reacted to the birds. Yeah. I've seen it on the screen. Yeah, exactly. He so keeps saying it's not the birds, but... What I mean is that, that they think there's, um, there's some damage to your lungs because of birds. the yeah, exposure birds. to the birds, yeah. Yeah? yeah? OK? So, we need some advice from the chest physicians about how we move it forward. So that's the one that we can't get you an appointment. So twice we've got them to rearrange it and twice they've cancelled it. I can keep chasing... I've told him that the doctor can only do what she can do. Yeah. So what I can do is escalate it. And we've escalated it from a... This man's appointment was cancelled because of the doctor's strike and you haven't yeah. booked it, please book one. Yeah. Right the way through to an urgent referral being faxed. Yeah. One of my... Hang on. One of my main concerns at the moment mm. is his... his, his, his um, his depression. This man is getting more and more depressed every day. He's been my friend for a long, long time, over 13 so, years. He, He's ta he talks suicide, he talks all sorts of things, and I'm just so frustrated to, We're see, getting some, nowhere. to see somebody deteriorate so much in six months. It's just it's soul-destroying. What am I going to do? I mean, it's two things, yeah. There's the depression because you're feeling so ill, and there's the fact that you're on a high dose of steroids, which will make you depressed. Yeah. And every time we try and reduce your steroids, you put it up, your right. chest flares up. If I could stop your steroids, that's what I'd do. Yeah. But every time you try and drop them, you really struggle, yeah. don't yeah. you? Thank you. We've spoken before about the fact that they won't constantly do scans and x-rays, but what they need to be doing is deciding what they need to do. Yeah. yeah? What I want them to do is, check is tell me about your medication. Yeah, because I think that if we could change the sorts of steroids you're on or reduce the amount of steroids you're on, then I think that a lot of the other symptoms would improve. Yeah. Well, the trouble is, one of your biggest things is, you, you know, you do just need to... I know it's very hard, but you need to just relax about what's going on around you medically. It's very hard. Because when everybody, you're on your own. everybody's doing the best that they can yeah. do. Well, you know that, don't you? It's very hard you know on your own because you, your head starts... You start thinking the worst all the time. You start, your head, you see, I seem to think the worst. Think, well, it's that's been one of down. what they think you have would account for your symptoms. We're just really struggling to control them at the moment. That's From the point, point of view of chasing the chest physician, I will do it again. Thank you very much, Doctor. Which and I'll see you then. The we are no, it's fine. It was nice to meet yeah, you, Pam. I mean, he just gets very frustrated. And I, I, I mean, I know he's got all these things, but a lot of his things are exacerbated by anxiety. I know they are. Bye, nice to meet you. Bye bye. How are you doing? Yeah. Take yeah. a seat. So, uh, there's a few problems. Yeah, I heard. Yeah. I've sorted it out. They were supposed to have a script for me just in case I didn't get what I got from you. Mm -hmm. and I, like mm -hmm. I said to you, they're a bit... They only give you five minutes and, you know... I said to them, yes, I got from Dr O'Donnell, but you only gave me up until the day I got to him. But the doctor says that... I know, she's... Um, I, I chatted to the owner. You, you told them you hadn't seen a doctor here? No, I told them I had. Two weeks before this consultation, Yasser came back to the practice and saw me after an absence of two and a half years. He told me that he had moved back into the area and so this was the first time that I'd seen him. His problems are dependence on opiates and benzodiazepines. The reason he came to see me that particular day was for his prescription for diazepam. But he omitted to mention that he'd been to his previous GP three days before and had gotten a prescription. She's trying to say, I've got a, a script from there and I've got a script from here. Mm. And I said, it's, it's not right, it needs to be sorted out. Why did you go back to Deadworth at all? They rung me and said... But you should say, I'm, I've already... I've moved to a different practice, I've registered. I said that. I said, it was back the script. Yeah. They, um, they, they said to me, um, come get the script. And I said to him on the phone that I don't need it. I'm with Dr O'Donnell, cos she phoned me and said, no, you've got two scripts. And then I was like, what? I, and then I went there and then sorted it out. I took my dad with me, cos of proof, and then... Um, uh, he went in and then he chatted as well and goes, look, my son didn't do that. Well, um, 
it does look very suspicious that it damages trust. Morning, ladies. Morning. I have an appointment, Walter Godley. <laughs> Take a seat next door. <laughs> Take a seat next door. Thank you. Seeing lots of gentlemen today. Sorry? Seeing lots of gentlemen today. It's making a change. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your third That's one? Right. I've switched off because of the children in there. Yeah, you know, it's too much. They're a bit noisy. What do you want to see the nurse for? Because I can't hear. You can't hear. Right. How are you? I can't hear a thing. So I can hear is like um, like a whining noise. Yeah. It's like... Dr. Badwala. Is it a lady? It's a man. Yeah, a man. Right. right, how can I help you today? I'm lost my hearing in my right ear. Or right. Part of, part of me hearing in my right ear. Sorry, what happened? Sorry? What happened? Um, well, Saturday or Sunday, I put my thing in me and a brown blob of uh, wax came out of me here. And then two, maybe Tuesday morning. The hearing sort of like went about 90%. Okay. Last night it just kept going and coming and going and coming. Is there any discharge? Why, is, why you put not, your cotton not, oil? Not, not since the um, weekend. OK, so what's the reason you've had your cotton oil still there? Um, the wife put some olive oil in last night. Oh, OK. Take it, uh, don't take it out. You should never put the cotton oil because it will absorb the oil. OK, so let's have a look. Fine. So, have you taken any painkillers? Sorry? Have you taken any pain relief? Yeah, I'll take some paracetamol. No, it didn't work. Do you use earbuds? Sorry? Do you use earbuds to clean your ear? I did uh, try um, a weekend. What, wait, this year or that year? That year. OK, I've, so I've nev no never... I've got no problems that year, except for partial deafness anyway. Yeah, because you're... But your ear um, looks a little bit perforated. Let's have a look here. Never use cotton buds. Ah. Oh. Uh, it looks a little bit infected as well. OK, there's a little bit of infection there. Oh. Oh. Sorry. So what I'll do is I'll give you some ear drops. It looks a little bit infected. Sorry? There's an infection there yep. in your ear. So I'm going to give you some antibiotic ear drops and some pain relief. I want you to come back and see us next week, Monday. There's a little bit of cotton wool hanging out. Let me take that off. <clears throat> yeah, so take some paracetamol. If that helps, carry on. If it doesn't, come back and see us. OK? So do you, you want me to make another appointment? Next week. Any time next week. Do you want me to week? make an appointment for next week or do you want me to make an appointment next week? Make an appointment next week. So next week, if it's still there... No, we still need to see you. Do you? Yeah. So I'll make an appointment now? Yeah. Before you go, if week. you can, yeah. I'll do that. All right? All right Take you. care. Bye bye. It does look very suspicious that it damages trust. I uh, can regain the trust and I can uh, bring my dad. Yeah. No, it's, it's not your dad, it's you. Yeah. I'm, the, the, tr the trust has to be with you. Yeah. Because, um, but because we, any, if there's a hint mm. that you may be working the system... No, I'm not. No, but if there's a hint that there... Yeah. So it is up to you mm. to make sure that everything is uh, absolutely above board and that it uh, seems as if it is... A, um, that it's apparent and clear to everybody mm. that it is above board. But if there's something that's not right about it, then that interferes with the trust between you and me mm. and between uh, the trust between you and, and all of the doctors who yeah. are available to help you. And, yeah. and so... I'll promise you, I will... If I get medicated, I'll promise this... Will well, not you happen. can promise... I'm promise not, promises... I'm it's yeah, to come away from there. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well, promises don't cut it. Um, we have to be sure, in terms of safe prescribing, mm. that, um, that that's what's happening. Managing how you choose to prescribe for any patient uh, can sometimes be a challenge. In substance misuse, sometimes people are in this situation because they're afraid of being without their medication. Duplicity or deception isn't what they're uh, trying to achieve, but it's their way of making sure that they're not going to go without. Our concern is not so much the deception, it's making sure that they're not unsafe and that, in particular, we're not contributing to a reduction in safety in prescribing. 
The point is that twice, on two occasions, you've gone back to Deadworth after you've had medication prescriptions here, and they've said, you've said that you didn't get a prescription here. And that... Twice? Twice, yeah. No, that's impossible. Well, I'll have to check this out, because I can't issue a prescription oh. unless I know what I'm doing. Do not go back to Deadworth again. If I, I'm if not you, going to yeah, Deadworth. if if yeah, well, if you have any sniff of getting a prescription um, from two doctors at the same time, I'll promise you that's not going to yeah, happen. Yeah, this yeah. is just a misunderstanding. Yeah. And what we'll do is we'll we'll need to put you on daily um, prescriptions. Uh, so oh, to, we, we, do we have, well, I know, but we, this is not my doing. This is you messed up here, and if you. If you continue to do this, then we will have to we have to go down this route anyway because there's no uh, route way out of this. So, so I have to come every day. No, no, you have to come to the pharmacy every day and pick up. And if everything is going well, then we can uh, begin to okay, we'll do relax that. the control. But we'll but that's that. what we have to do at the moment. Thank you very much, Doctor. You're welcome. Oh. If they have any problem, they can ring up from the pharmacy. Yeah, yeah and yeah. you can keep a, a check if you. Yeah, I'm, I, well, I will. I'll be watching yeah, it closely. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No, okay. uh, I want you to regain the trust with me because I've known you for a long time. It's important. Yeah, yeah. And yeah it's important. I want to yeah. keep that trust. I don't want yeah. you to look down on me. Like no, no, no. I, I wouldn't. I'd never look down on you anyway. No. This is just purely a question of trust. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm getting yeah. at. It's really important you yeah. don't mess up. Yeah. So I'm going to prove to you that I wasn't. Do. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very. Yeah, much. yeah. Thank you. you take care. See you in two yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I used to sing in school. Did you? Now I, like, I used to. Oh. I used to be a big Britney Spears fan. So if we used to go places and then if something was getting delayed, my teacher would be like, "Go out stage quickly and sing a song." Oh my God. I'll sing this one song. No, please. No. No. I was in dancing as well. I remember when my eldest joined the choir and she was tone deaf and I used to say to her, "Mine." Don't sing, just mine. <laughs> How can I help? I had a lot of issues with my stomach. It was a diarrhea. Continues the last three, four weeks of a suffering. Okay. The doctor done my some stool, test. The stool. That's stool. correct. And still same issue because I was suffering with overactive thyroid. When my thyroid levels up, mm. perfectly fine. Good. Because if the thyroid levels played up, that's what happens as well. Then yes, just another issue might be. Still, I'm in the same issue. It's not getting better. Okay. Your stool sample was clear, so that was good. Right. Okay, but let's go through a couple of things. How long has the diarrhea been going on for now? We're talking about one month now, isn't it? Okay, and uh, four week history of diarrhea. How many times a day are you open? Oh, Christ, sometimes back to back. Six times? Six times a day. Easily. Yeah. Six times per day. Any blood or mucus? I didn't see it. I should have, but I just. Um, any vomiting? No. Any tummy pains? When I have to go, I start rumbling. Mm. I'm ready. <laughs> it tells me, come on, mate. <laughs> that's it. So you need to go and open yeah, your that's it. And then and you after expect that, you after you open And then after that, you know, it's calm down. Yeah. Any weight loss? I tried to lose weight anyway, which I did a successful last, because last year I was 95, and now I'm 85 now, which is I want to do it because I cut down all the processed sugar and everything for my And you've been diet. exercising as well? Exercise, right? I do lots of exercise, yeah. yeah. Okay. And have you been abroad recently? No. And anyone in the family have any bowel conditions, like inflammatory bowel disease? Mm -hmm. Ulcerative colitis or Crohn's? Mm -hmm. Can you have a feel of your tummy? I'm just going to gently press. No pain anywhere in the tummy? Nothing. That's good, OK. One of the investigations, one of the examination that we should do if someone's getting persistent diarrhea is examining the back passage to make sure that there's nothing worrying that we can feel in the back passage. Are you happy for me to do that today? Yeah. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is lie on your left side and bring your knees up towards your chest, OK? Yeah. Hello. Hiya. I'm through. Have a seat. Thank you. <sighs> How are you? Everything was fine today, yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I've seen the midwife, community midwife, because yeah. I just kept a birth three yeah. days ago. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, everything was fine, but my boobs are a little bit swollen. And what she says, probably is infected. OK. Because so they're painful and they're, they're swollen? They're painful, they're swollen, they're big. They're getting red? Slowly but surely. OK. Any temperatures? I don't know. I didn't check it, I'll be honest. Okay. I was so Do you fine. feel well? Uh, I feel so. Uh, I feel okay, but it's painful. It's very painful. Are you breastfeeding? Not now, I think, because I'm just scared to do 
Okay, they are but you have so been. Yes, yes. So you've been expressing milk. Yes. Ah, okay, fine. Okay, let's just check your temperature. And baby's okay? Baby's okay. She's doing well. So I can't complain about baby. It's just me. <laughs> That's normal. Do you want to come behind here? Mm -hmm. Okay, I just need you to take everything off, okay. including Definitely. your bra. Just mm -hmm. sit on the couch, okay? Mm -hmm. They're so big and wet and painful. Okay, I'm going to have a feel. Okay. Already they are painful. All of them? Mm hmm Very small, aren't they? Mm-hmm. And tender. And I have to say, yesterday was like half. Today morning is like double up, I think. I think this one's worse than this one. This one has still has some... But still, it still is painful. For me, it's both the same, if it's about pain. Maybe it's... Uh... And milk, the milk's coming out OK? Sorry, yeah. just one second. It's coming out OK? Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Get yourself dressed. Okay. So, yes. They are swollen, they are tender, and they are slightly red in some areas and very warm to touch. So I'd like to give you some antibiotics just in yes, case I there's an infection going on. So I'm just... I don't think so. I can cope another day. <laughs> OK. It's one tablet four times a day. OK. So if I had the antibiotic, can I still feed the baby? Yeah. Um, the one that I'm going to give you is fine to take while you're breastfeeding. OK, okay. so it's absolutely OK to do that. They're not getting any better, or well, it's still the same. You need to come back and see us, definitely, all right? OK. There you go. All right. Lovely. Thank you so much. No problem. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. OK. This entry was reassuring, OK? So, um, when anyone gets persistent diarrhoea, there's lots of things that we think about, OK? so. Obviously, one of the things that we've got to rule out is infection, OK? And normally, like I said, it settles down, but it's good that we sent the stool sample up. There was nothing that was shown in that stool sample. The other thing that we think about is inflammation. So there is another stool sample that I want you to do to look for inflammation in the bowel that can cause these types of symptoms. Does that make sense, OK? Yes. The other thing, of course, that we think about is, is there anything worrying going on, OK? And normally, it would, you know, there's lots of different signs and symptoms. So for, uh, persistent diarrhoea with blood, weight loss, etc. Does that make sense? Yeah. And there's a couple of other blood tests that I want to add yes, just fine. to make sure that we've ticked all the boxes to make sure that we've investigated you thoroughly. Does that make sense? After these investigations, if the symptoms persist, then we may need to get you up to the gastroenterologist specialist to have a look and see what's going on. Okay. Lovely. Doctor, thank you. No trouble. I need to get to the bottom of this uh, yes, absolutely. issue. Yes, absolutely. So I'll see you in two weeks. I'll see you in two weeks and then we'll move things forward from there. All right, then. Thanks. No trouble. Thanks. Lovely, lovely to see you. Bye-bye now. Try and avoid that big blood vessel. Oh, oh my god, no, don't, don't, don't go any further. Okay. <laughs> That's really hard. Oh my god, no, please. Okay, oh. So it's aggravating. I'm sorry. I thought that can I help? Oh, um, just a couple of things really. Um yes. First thing, I was in hospital again yes, at the weekend. Um, the week before, I was in then again at the weekend, and they mm. actually tried me on uh, a different antiseptic called Domperidone. Oh um, yes. I've got them here just to show you, make sure I've got the name right. Yes. And um, they actually gave me some that were um, out of date, so I needed some more. Okay. Um, I don't know how, in, you know, there's so many they have to deal with, but just it worked quite well because Cyclozine like, makes me feel a bit sick before I feel better. Mm. But apparently these have their side effects as well, so I'm quite yeah. keen to try them. You can, but some in some people these can have these kind of psychotic episodes oh, where okay. they get certain spasms of the neck and that kind of thing. Oh, wow. um, it tends to happen more in children. I can give you a short course now, but I think it's for when you have the flare-ups. Yeah. I think long-term, stick to um, the, the cyclozine is safer. Yeah. 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 Samantha is a 24-year-old patient of mine with ongoing chronic um, abdominal pains. She's under a hospital in London uh, with the gastroenterology team um, undergoing numerous investigations. However, she's still getting these chronic intermittent cramps. Because I'm on a lot, I'm on trabadol, morphine as well. You're on, so I've got here for Panadol. Are you still taking Buscapan? Yeah, yeah, eight a day. You're, are you still on Cocodamol? Yeah. Amitriptyline? Yeah. 
Lansoprazole yep. for Talipram, yep. and you still need the Cosmocol for Is that the, the Lovacol? Yeah. Yeah, I've got some at home in the hospital game quite so a lot. So if I go to add drug, it'll tell me whether these will interact as so well. So I'm on Tramadole and I'm on morphine as well. See, there we go. So. Oh, wow, well, yeah. It, but basically, having amitriptyline, and Citalopram, um, and Domperidone, yeah. these affect the heart, basically. That's the other side effects. Dressed Queenie. What? Well, if you feel something sharp, tell me, I'll stop. Yeah, I can slightly feel that. Oops. Actually, on my legs there. Right, so there's quite a lot of discharge on the dressing. <laughs> this is Holly. Hello. She's with us for the afternoon. Right. Alan, could you sit up on the couch, please? Yeah. Just saves me bending down. Of course I will. Lovely. But without being, uh, does Holly know I've got to drop your trousers, you know? I'm happy if you are. <laughs> right, how's the legs feeling? The right leg is on its fourth week, isn't it? Yeah, fourth week. If you have a look and you say it's OK, then I'm still on my six week plan. But the left leg is still a little bit oozy, but not much. Alan has the condition called lymphedema. Lymphedema is a disorder of the lymphatic system whereby fluid is not being drained away from the tissues adequately. This can happen in any part of the body, and in Alan's case, it's in his legs. Alan's condition is lifelong. However, he has a very positive outlook on life. Coming in for dressings regularly? Yeah. For a year and a half. I used to come in every day. So, down to so once a week now? It's once, once a week. week now. It used to be every day and Sheila would run and hide. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So you're just having it put on like this with the yellow line over, are you? Oh, not on the right leg. No, on this, just, we're just doing the left leg. Right. What that oh, is, that they leg. put um, a little bit of the green. Bit of green. OK. And then they've been put in the padding over the top of it. Sure. It's really helpful if patients have additional support at home or family that will help them at home. Initially, Sally was doing some dressings at home to save Alan coming on a daily basis. And this was also freeing up appointments at the surgery for other patients that needed care. So yellow lines just sort of essentially to hold it all on like a big sock. Yeah. Right, this is my problem because I haven't got the strength. Do you want me to get some gloves on and hold Thank things you. in place? Yeah. Maybe pull at the top would be yep. easier for me. Thank you. That's fine. OK. That's fine. Oh, dear. I'm what? Just watching. Do you want me to do the second there? No, it's fine. It's fine. Thank you. I've been thinking about cake, and I've decided that I have to give cake a miss for a while. But I, do, I enjoy looking at it, but I'm resolved not to eat cake this okay, afternoon. So we will force it on, yeah. Thank you. This is a bigger shop than Brexit. Yeah, I Jim refuses don't. cake. Yeah. It's such a shame. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, this, this, I understand this. I have to slim down. <laughs> yes. When was the hospital mission uh, again? I got out on Saturday, so I went in Friday in early hours. Is it for tummy pain? Yeah, same as always. In the is it right or left side? Right side, right. yeah. They think it might be a valve for my pancreas, but they're not too worried about it yet. They're trying to get the pain under control. Oh, the sphincter of the yeah, valve. Yeah, it's been yeah. four years now. They're trying to get the sphincter problem under control. If it is that, I'm seeing Hannah Smith on Monday to sort of get more... So, follow-up woman at home of hospital, is that next week? Yeah, um, because I had Botox um, injected a few months ago now, beginning of April, and they want to see whether that helped or not. It hasn't, but they need to discuss Where you it. had that um, injected? In Hannah Smith, they did an endoscopy, went back in, injected the sphincter muscle with the Botox. Oh, my goodness. But it was trial and error, it's quite a new thing. Mm. Nothing's eased with the pain, but I was willing to give it a go. Mm. So now they might decide to inject more or they might decide to try another treatment now. So, yeah. touch wood, I'm just hoping something yeah. eases it just so I can get back to work, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't want to, I want to get back to normal. What really. do you do as your job? I was in an office, I had a little office job, customer service, because I'm like talking, which was really good. But um, I had to let go, I was a liability on my pain painkillers, mm -hmm. I was not well, I had, to, I had to let go. And on these medications, are you driving at the moment? No, I can't, I don't want to be scared. If I have an accident, I'd feel so 
Yeah, because some of these medications can make you drowsy, so dizzy. we always have to advise against operating machinery or driving. Yeah, that's yeah. One, one of the reasons why I had to leave a job, because it was in a warehouse, mm. so obviously the machinery rules going around and everything, I just, it wasn't for me, you know. Samantha is on numerous medications to help alleviate some of her pain. Some of them are to help her nausea, some are to help relax the bowel. Other medications she's on are opioid-based, like cocodamol and tramadol. One of the concerns that we have in treating young patients with long-term pain management therapies is that they can develop a physical dependence and even an addiction to certain opioid-based medications. Um, therefore, it's really important to keep these as a short-term use only at low doses and eventually try to wean them off these medications. And you're not taking any other illicit drugs, anything no, over the no, counter, never, no, herbal, nothing no, like I that? Just, okay. I try like multivitamins, but just to try and boost my immune system. <laughs> At the moment, carrying with the um, propanolol, the higher yeah. dose, I can see on the last consultation with one of the locum doctors that they yeah. put you up to 20, 20 milligrams. Yeah. Carrying with that three times a day, I gave you the, we increased your sertalopram to 40, 40 milligrams. Yeah, I'm happy on that now. So carry on with that, and I think let's see you again in four weeks' time with yes, that. Please, yeah. With the domperidone, as I said, it can affect the heart. There is side effects. I'll give you seven tablets just for yeah. the one week now, um, and then after that, carry on with your cyclozine. Is that yeah, all right? That's fine, yeah. So just use them in an emergency if and when you get a flare up. Is that yeah, all right? That's fine. Thank okay. You. So let's do that. It's just sort of keeping me comfortable to find out what's going on, you know. Sure. There you go. Take care. Yeah. Nice to meet you again. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Oh, take your time. Up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Take care, bye. Do you want a job, Sally, over the summer? Uh, I've got two weeks off. It's uh, Friday night. Well, if you ever get stuck over the next two oh, weeks... bless you. Just let me know and I'll come in and help you. We have a laugh, because of, just as they patch me up with one thing, I get something else. I was rushed in for a triple bypass. No. Yeah. <laughs> We still can't get rid of him that way, can we? <laughs> yeah, as soon as they're healed, I'll think of something else. Oh, jeez. Always fancy to look bottom with. Behave yourself. <laughs> I remember when you, the very, very, very first time you that came. You and Dr. Morris. And I haven't been here that long. No. He made that drastic mistake, didn't he? He said, oh, God, I think we'd better book him into our surgeries. Forever. Forever, by the looks of it. And he wasn't wrong. Done. Oh, all right, then. Good job. Right, is that it now, Sheila, That's for it. another five months? If only. <laughs> right, so, um... Have we got an appointment for next week? Yeah, another one at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Right, I'll have a look and see if that's me. I might just have a day's <laughs> holiday. <laughs> Right, right. That's all, all lovely, lovely, lovely to see you. Lovely to see right, you. Get the bus out now. Do you? See you later. Bye. 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 I'll just leave the door for a minute. Yeah, just no, hot. Because oh, you have to, you have to put full stretch on it. Yeah, yeah. That's hard work. Bye bye, little man. Yeah. <laughs> Super star. Yeah. All right, there you go. Bye bye. Then. Thank you very much, right. Doctor. Okay. Yeah, thanks very much. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you. Right, thank you Best of luck, OK? Thank Have you. a good trip. Bye-bye. Take care, then. Have a good day. Bye-bye, you too.